In 2014, Peter Lick sold an image called Phantom for an alleged six and a half million dollars. At that time, that meant that out of the top 20 most expensive photographs ever sold, he had four of them. But what is it about his photography that makes it so popular amongst collectors? How's it, how's it? Photographers are a funny old bunch, aren't we? <laughs> we can get very antsy about other people's successes. And Peter Lick, I feel, is probably a poster child for this kind of discussion. His work sells for staggering amounts of money. You know, he's been awarded awards by numbers of, of, of bodies of photography, you know, respected bodies of photographers. And yet, I can't help but feel that a lot of his photography, it's no different to a whole bunch of stuff that you see on, on Instagram these days. So what is it that makes him a photographer who has galleries all over the United States in really expensive places and apparently has sold half a billion dollars worth of prints when the people who are photographing similar subjects might get 10 or 12 likes on Instagram? It's one thing to take a photograph and say, look at this pretty photograph. This is, this is so cool. It is another thing entirely to get people to connect with it. I don't mean on a kind of, they look at it and they go, oh, that moves me in a way that, you know, that it encourages somebody to buy something, but it draws somebody into the story of your photography. Peter putting his photography competency to one side and his aesthetics and stuff. And this is not the discussion about whether or not these are good photographs. It is more about what he does with these images that I believe is where his success comes in. And if you look at the picture of Ghost, which is the, the color version of, of, of Phantom. Now that here on his website, it said is this Peter Lick masterwork is now sold out. Okay, it's not like this is sold out or whatever. It, look at the word he's using, this Peter Lick masterpiece. Then down the bottom, there's a little bit of story about this image. A lot of people, when they put up photographs online, will just go like, here's O Antelope Canyon, and uh, it was Canon 5DS, and it was 24 millimeter lens, like an f2.8, what have you, and that would be the end of that discussion, right? That's why kind of what people include in the images. But Spend a moment to look at this image while I read what Peter has written. The biggest lesson I have learned in photography is that timing is everything. No matter how perfect your technique and equipment, if you aren't in the right place at the right time, you simply won't get the shot. In the underground sandstone caves of Antelope Canyon in summer, I knew the sun would pass directly overhead at midday as the time approached, giving me my only opportunity for the shot, a narrow slither of light beamed down through the keyhole onto the sandy canyon floor below. At the precise moment I clicked the shutter, my Navajo Indian guide threw a handful of dust into the shaft of light. It wasn't until weeks later when I finally got to see the results of the shoot that I was able to see the ghost-like human form that had emerged. And I could only wonder if the ancient spirits of the canyon had been present with me that day. That's a lot different to just like listing out some sort of technical verbiage, isn't it? Now, you may have your own thoughts about, is this kind of, you know, is, is that too wordy? Is it too much? But Peter knows the audience that he wants to sell images to. He, he, he wants to draw them into his story, to get them in a place. It's, it, it's one thing, he could have just sat there and go, do you know what, there's this place, when the light comes down, you just chuck some sand in the air and blah, blah, blah. But listen to, he's, he's using descriptive language. He's building a story around the images. He's inviting you as the viewer of this photograph into his world. I feel that, you know, even if you, even if you don't want to sell prints, if you just want to get people to engage with your photography, then do a better job of helping them connect with it. Not from like using the shape and the form and the textures and things of that nature to, to conjure up an experience, but to, to craft a story around you. Who are you as a photographer? 
don't just write on it if you have a website and you know if you go to Squarespace, Squarespace have not sponsored me for ages, but you know Squarespace is quite useful, sort of easy place to get get started. On an about page, don't just write, do you know, I've really liked my camera since I was eight years old and I like, you know, uh, drinking coffee from a, a little mug and playing with Lego. That doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell the viewer about anything about you as an artist. Generally, people who are interested in photography, looking at it as, as art, they don't care about the camera that you use. They don't care that in wedding photography, what, that you've got insurance, right? They want, what motivates you as a photographer? What motivates me? Yeah, I've thought about this for ages. What is it that, that motivates me in my photography? And when I look at my work, and I've been working at it like in, in a, a lot in depth recently, because I'm, you know, I'm putting together these collections for sale, that it is just, it, my why is coming out again. What's motivating? Why am I taking the photographs that I do is because I find that I like to be quiet. I'm an, I, I am actually quite an introspective person who just, I'm quite happy to sit alone and, and look at small things. And I found that when I'm in a city, if I look above the crowd, about the tiny things that, that get overlooked, the corners, the shapes, those little graphic elements, that that allows me to find some, some quietness. A lot of the photographs that I, I've taken, are they're taken in very busy places, but they all seem to have a stillness. That's the story. If I start telling that, you know, I, I take photographs to find a, a place for me to take a breath in the world. That's a lot better than just, do you know what? I quite like shooting in square because I've always photographed square and, and I use a this and I use a that and I use Lightroom. To, that's, nobody cares. When I look at the photographs that I've, I've put together, that some of my favorite ones, each one of them is starting to have a story. That story, in the case of this chair, was, it's nothing amazing, but hopefully it's gonna give you an idea about how to start thinking about a wider story in your images. That, you know, this is me walking around a, a place called Brno in, in the Czech Republic where we were in art galleries and there's a weird thing that happened when we were in, in the Czech Republic is that wherever you went in a gallery or a museum or something there seemed to be somebody in each room always kind of looking at you you know one of the you know there's people who kind of like in an art gallery they're sort of standing make sure you don't run off with artworks but there I got the feeling that there was always somebody watching and this was this is one of the watchers chairs and I, I just like it. it's a simple image but but there's a story already being built up around it not like oh i saw this and do you see how the red contrasts with the white and stuff like that we're not looking at those stories we're not telling the photographer telling people why you're taking the photograph you're telling about what motivates you as a photographer what's what's the interesting story around this this is uh, the roof of the departures hall at, uh, at IAD in, uh, in, in Dallas, in Washington, DC. And I love this photograph. Again, it's that busy space. This place is hugely busy. And I'm standing, there's lots of people, and you know, saying goodbye to a friend of mine. And I'm like looking around, I go, look at this beautiful ceiling. That's amazing. But also, and I don't know if you know this, airport terminals are designed to help funnel you in a direction which you want to go. Not literally with like walls and things, obviously they have those, but next time that you are in a, an airport terminal, look at the ceiling, the roof, the, the design, it is to help flow the people through the building. That's a, 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 look at that. That is like, it's this weird, you could have, they could have just put this post up into the roof, but they've taken the time to sculpt it. See how like, kind of it's, it's flowing. I love that. That's, so that's what's drawing me. See how I'm getting, I'm getting into the image and I'm, I'm bringing you as the viewer into the story. It's now that image is starting to resonate with you in a different way. So if I just went, this is an iPhone 12 and it's, uh, I photographed this because it looks pretty cool. It's, it's, it's so much more than that. This, the orange, and the, the plastic tables and just, wow, I love it, it's so cool. I just, that was, that's at the British Museum. It's downstairs, there's a place where they would have like the kids, school kids and stuff would go to eat their lunch and we're there with, 
me and, um, and, and my son and then his best friend. So we went downstairs to somewhere a bit quiet to sit down. And there's all this kind of cool stuff. These bids, this is, this is a, this, you know, just this, uh, uh, basically a, an area that is just utilitarian. And it could have been just, you know, whatever. But look at the effort they've made to have this kind of awesome orange, concrete steel thing in there. It's just, wow. It's like nobody ever sees this. And yet, you know, we as a photographer, we, this is our ability to say, look, thousands and thousands and thousands of people every single day walk over the top of this thing and have no idea that it's there. I, this, this is what we're looking for. This picture here. Oh, this is Stratford Tube Station in, in London. And again, hundreds, thousands of people walk past this little yellow wall with the blue dot, with the, with the arrow every time. And I don't think anybody has ever considered it as a as potential for a photograph. This is about finding those, you know, as I said earlier, that, that quietness in the photography, in the world around us, just somewhere that I can, I can touch and go, do you know what? All right, this, this is a stillness that I can connect with. I don't want the hustle and the bustle. I know I have to kind of exist in it because that's the world, but I want this, this quietness. And the reason why my quietness is quite angular, why it's quite metallic and, and, and uh, I won't say brutalist, but it's got these kind of hard angles is because I, I grew up near Milton Keynes. It is a, it is a, what's called a new town. There's lots of this kind of architecture around. And I find that comforting. I find that a, a solidness in my world where I don't necessarily see that with countryside and landscapes and things like that. And I, I want a simplicity of line, of shape, of form, texture, things of that nature that I kind of just go, do you know what? I just, I want to have them sit and just be a safe place. It's about inviting the viewer into your world, making them feel something with the photographs. That way it makes those photographs easier to stand out in the person's mind. Peter Lick's images stand out in people's minds because he has built an environment around them. Not a physical environment, the, the you know, the galleries and all that sort of stuff, but he's built an, an ethos, a mythos almost. Is that the right word? Of Peter Lick, the photographer. He's telling stories. He's not saying I am the greatest thing in the world, or maybe he is, but you know, that's part of his shtick, right? But he is taking the time to present these photographs in a way that resonates with certain people. And he's done a very good job of that. Now, even if you don't agree with the terminology that he uses, the way that he presents himself, if he's brash, or if you think he's too much of a salesman or something like that, you cannot deny that people remember his images because he gives them something more to hold on to than just the photograph. If you want people to resonate with your images, you want them to remember your images, give them a story with it, give them something, give them a reason for it to lodge somewhere in their mind that is separate from all the other photographs and all the other images that they see. I am gonna be launching my print space. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be launching my prints on Friday, the first is coming Friday. And I'm just, oh, I'm like, <laughs> I'm still so, I'm so nervous. I'll see what, see what happens. I've been busy, you know, thinking about, you know, the story's gonna go with my images. If you would like to get early access to the launch and uh, yeah, and get a 25 pound uh, gift card as well, which would be pretty cool. There is a link in the description box to sign up for the invite. Thank you ever so much for watching. Check out this video over here and I will see you again soon.